Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my C-Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, what we're going to focus on are C-Sharp collections, such as array lists, dictionaries, queues, and stacks, like always, all the code, as well as a transcript and cheat sheet for this entire video is available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so here we are, and I'm going to import a couple libraries here. This first one, the collections library, is going to allow us to use array lists, and then this guy down here is going to allow us to use dictionaries. So let's come in here, and basically, I'm also going to cover something else called region. One of you guys brought it up, and the cool thing about it is it allows us to collapse our code, and you just type in region, and then if you want to have some type of information inside of here, like array list code, you can do that like this, and then you can come in and type in end region. And then what you'll be able to do whenever I put some code inside of there is you'll be able to see that we can collapse it. And it's just a nice, neat way for us to be able to keep our code manageable whenever it is longer in list. And what we're going to do now is talk about array lists, which are just resizable arrays that can hold multiple different data types. And how you create one is you go array list, and then I'm just going to call this a list is equal to new array list and close that off and there we are you just created an array list and we can see here how region works now we can just click on that and see how it shrinks see pretty useful stuff and if you want to come in and be able to add information to an array list you just go add and we can put Bob inside of here just to put something and let's go and add in some more things uh, let's say we want to put the number 40. Perfectly fine. You can do that with an array list. And as you can see, it just automatically resizes. Now, if you want to see the number of items inside of your array list, you can come in here and you could do something like count and you can go and put in our call count on the array list and it's going to automatically tell you how many items are inside of there. And of course, you want to make sure you put the little dot inside of there. You're also going to be able, whoops, don't need those parentheses there. Forgot that for a second. Another thing we're going to be able to do is check the capacity. Now the capacity is going to automatically increase each time an item is added. So we can come in here and it increases by two each time you add a new item. So we'll change this to capacity just to see how that works. And then change this to capacity. And then we're going to create another array list. So array list, and let's call this a list two. And then we're going to be doing things like joining these array lists and so forth and so on. So another thing you can do is you can add an object array, which is going to allow us to come in and add multiple different values all at one time. So we can come in and go add range and then new object array like that and then your curly brackets, and then the items you want to put inside of there. So let's say we want to have Mike and Sally and Egg, because that makes sense. And there we go. And that is how we can add a whole bunch of these different values all at one time. And just make sure you close off the curly bracket. And there it is. And now that we have two arrays set up, let's say we want to add one array list to another. What we can do is just go pretty much the same thing. We're going to use add range again. And we can go a list two to this guy. And now we added those two array lists together. And you're going to be able to sort an array if it contains the same data type. There is a way around it if it's different data types, but you have to do some pretty funky stuff. And I'm not going to get into that right at this moment. You're also going to be able to come in here and reverse the items inside of there after you go and sort them. Also going to be able to come in and insert data at a specific position. So let's say that you wanted to add a new string inside of here at the second place in your array list, which is going to be the first index, of course, or the number one index. You just type where you want it to go and what you want inside of there, and it will automatically place it in there and make some different uh, space available for you, of course. And let's come in here and I'm going to say, call this guy range. And what I want to do with this is create an, a new array list that is going to be made up of the first two items of another range. So we can go a list two and get range. 
and we're going to start off at the zero index and then get two items after that. Probably makes sense here to also cover how to cycle through an array list so that we can see some of the output for what we've been doing. You can go for each and then this is going to be traded as an object and I'm just going to call it O and we can try range here and then to output that information of course is quite simple just go like this and let's say that we want O to get printed out on each of the lines and then we can run this and see what it looks like with all the different changes we've made here and there you can see we have count and capacity which is two larger than count and then it went and printed out Sally and Turkey and likewise we could do this for the other different items let's also come in here and do a list a list two and run that just to see how that changed and you can see here it printed out sally turkey mike and egg okay so good stuff and then we can of course do a whole bunch of other different things with array lists we're also going to be able to remove an item and we can specify which specific index we want to remove so we just go remove at and say we want to remove the first item that's how that's done we're also going to be able to remove the first two items or whatever you want to do. So you're just going to say where you want to start at and where you want to end removing items. So we can go remove range and let's say we want to remove the first two items. That's how we do it. I'm going to get rid of those just so it doesn't cause any problems because now I'm going to do some searches. Let's say I want to search for a match starting at a provided index. We can do so. We can say console right line. And we can come in, you know, and change the indexes, increment them, and so forth and so on until we find all the different results or whatever you want to do. And here, to do that, we're just going to jump in and we'll say a list two. And we'll go index of. And then what we're looking for, and I'm looking for turkey, and I want to start searching at the very beginning of the string. Just by putting that index inside of there, I can do that. We're also going to be able to come in and convert an array list into a string array. So I'll just go like this, and my array, and convert this into a string array, and we'll use a list two, and you call two array on it and we'll say type of, and you have to type in string inside of there because that's what we're working with. And I forgot the equal sign, so let's throw that inside of there. So that's how to convert a array list into a regular old array. Likewise, you're going to be able to convert a string array into an array list. So let's go and create one. So let's throw that inside of there and let's just call this customers. And I'm sure you remember how to create an array. Let's just go Bob and Sally and Sue. So there we are, we created an array and we wanna convert it into an array list. First, you have to create your array list. I'm gonna call this customer array list is equal to, spell that correct, is equal to new array list and then you close that off and then after that we can just go customer array list and of course we're going to use add range and we'll say what we want to add and there is our array we want to add to it and of course we could come in again and say something like for each and we're going to be dealing with a string here and let's we'll just call it s in and we'll use customer array list and then we'll output that information on the screen. No point in doing this. Let's just copy this and come in here and paste it inside of there and change this to S. All right, and we run it. And there you can see it printed out, Bob, Sally, and Sue. Okay, so there's an overview of all the different things you can do with array lists and the usefulness of this custom collection. And now we're gonna take a look at dictionaries. Now, dictionaries are going to store key value pairs, and to create them, you're going to define the data type for the key as well as the value that's going to be stored inside of it. So I'm going to create a dictionary, and I need to define what the data type for the key is and what the data type is for the value. And I'm going to call this superheroes and then we go new and then you're going to say dictionary once again and string string and then close this off with parentheses and there you go you just created a dictionary now if i want to add items to it of course you're just going to use add again they're using the same type of format here and we're going to have the key we'll just have the key you can have spaces for your keys 
and then you'll have the value afterwards. So we'll say Superman. And let's go in here and add a couple more. So one and two. And then for the next one, we can have Bruce Wayne. And I think you might know who he is. And then we'll go and put Barry West. And don't know if you know who that is, but if you didn't, that's the flash. Okay, so there we are. We created our dictionary. Now we can remove a key value pair quite easily. So we can just come in here and go superheroes. And guess what? You're going to use remove again. And you're going to type in whatever the key is for it. So I'm going to say Barry West. And there you go. Barry West is gone. You're going to need to be able to get the number of keys inside of here. Let's see if I have. Nope, don't have that saved. Here by calling count once again. So we can say count and then go and get the count for our superheroes. And that's just going to be superheroes and count, of course. We're going to be able to come in here and also check if a key is present. Just paste that inside of there. So we could do something like Clark Kent and then check for the presence of that. And to do that, we're going to get rid of count and replace it with contains key. So pretty easy to remember these names. And then we'll just type in Clark Kent. Why don't I go in here and do a couple more of these? Of course, I'm going to have to put closing parentheses right there. We can get the value for the key and store it in a string. So we can say something like superheroes and try get value. And what we're trying to do is try to get Clark Kent. And we want to store it in a string. And to do that, you type in out and string. And then whatever you want the name of the string to be. And there it is. It both creates it and stores a value inside of it all in the same place. And likewise, we can come in here and let's get rid of that. Type in Clark Kent and let's get rid of all this stuff and instead type in test right there and close that off with quotes. And of course, we're going to be able to cycle through our key value pairs using for each just like we did before. Here, what you're going to do is type in key value pair and then define what the data types are for both the key as well as the value item in superheroes. And then we can output some information for each one of those guys. So let's just go like this and change that to O or change that to one and change that or change it to zero, change that to one. And then to actually get the item out of there. So I named this item. We're just going to come in and type in item and key. And then the next one is going to be item and value. And we can run that. And you can see that it had two items in it. That's after we got rid of Flash. You can see we did a search for Clark Kent as a key and it came back as true. And then we printed out the Clark Kent and Superman. And then we printed out both the key and the values. Okay, so there's dictionaries. Oh, I guess I forgot one more thing. You could also come in here and go superheroes and clear and that is going to clear out and delete every item inside of your dictionary all right so there's a rundown of what we can do with dictionaries in c sharp and now we're going to take a look at queues now a queue is what we call a first in first out collection and i'm going to show you exactly what that looks like so we'll create a queue here first and i'm just going to call it queue is equal to new and Q. It feels satisfying to type out Q for some weird reason. If you want to add items into your Q, you just use. You would think add, but no, it's in Q. Don't know why they did that. And I'm going to just put a bunch of numbers inside of here so that you can see how they're different and how the information gets pulled out of here. And then we'll go for each and object O in Q. And then we're going to print out each of the queues so you can see how they are pulled out of the queue whenever you call for it there that is and let's go and do something like queue inside of here and let's do string interpolation and we will throw o inside of there and we can run that and you're going to see that they come out in exactly the order in which they were put in okay so pretty easy first in first out that's a queue now let's do a couple other different things here with our queues, just to check out what's going on here. And we can come up here. Let's say we want to check if an item is inside of a queue. Of course, we're going to be able to do that as well. So we can just come in and say, is one in a queue? 
And how we get the answer to that age old question is by calling a function called contains and then what specifically you're looking for inside of the queue. We're also going to be able to remove, let's say, the first item from a queue. Just copy this, paste that down there, and we'll call this remove one. And it's actually going to re return the value that was removed from it. And you'd use DQ instead of NQ in this situation. But you're going to be able to, what, what it's doing here is it's actually removing, let's spell DQ the correct way, DQ. It's actually removing the first item. It's going to return it to you, but there's no way of return or of deleting a specific index or whatever. And let's run that just to see those two different things. So is one in the queue? True. And remove one, it returns the value that is at the very beginning of the queue. Okay. You're also going to be able to come in there and look at the first item in the queue, but not remove it and use peak for that. So let's just call that peak one. It's actually going to be peak two, but whatever. The two is going to be what's returned. And you're just going to type in peak once again and get rid of that. And we'll do a couple more here before we go and run it. You're also going to be able to copy a queue to an array. So this is going to be an object array, just like we did previously with the other collections. I'm going to call this num array is equal to and call Q and then you call to array just like we did with our array list previously. Let's go and also print out our array. So let's go like this and let's just get rid of all this stuff right here. And we're going to use string and join. And let's say we want everything to be separated by a comma and a space. We can do that. And what we want to print out here is our number array close out for that parentheses and we can do that and is there anything else I want to do well of course you're going to be able to come in and clear your queue just by calling clear on it right like that but we're not going to do that instead we are going to come in here and we're going to run it and see what all those other functions did and there you can see we printed those items out you can see here we removed the one here we just peeked at the two but didn't remove it as you can see right there it printed out whenever we printed out that array and here we cycled through and printed out all the items in our queue okay so pretty useful stuff and now we're going to take a look at stacks now a stack is kind of similar to a queue except it what it how it works is it's a last in first out collection and you'll see what that looks like. So I'm gonna come in and create a stack like this. And I'm just gonna call it stack just so it's nice and easy to remember. And stack like that. And we're going to be using stacks down here whenever we are cycling through this information. And let's call this stack as well. So we'll be able to use the for each once again to cycle through just like you do with all the other collections. And to push or to put items onto our stack we push them on like that by calling the push function and let's go and add in two more of these so we'll also add in two and we'll also add in three so there we are we pushed three items on there and let's run it and you're going to see how they come off see in the opposite order like i said last in first out that is the way a stack works completely the opposite of a queue now you're going to be able to use peak on our stack just like we did with our queue. So let's say we wanted to peak one, we could do so. And let's change that to zero and get rid of this. And then we will call peak on this. And of course to do so you go stack and you go peak and that will return that item for us. We're also of course going to be able to remove items except what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to call a function called pop. So let's just change this to pop, pop one, change that to a zero. And of course, to get that to work, you just go stack and pop like that. And that's going to remove an item, not just peek at it. Likewise, we're going to be able to check if an item exists or not. And let's just copy this guy right here and paste that inside of there. So whether a stack is going to contain an item or not, we can come in and do something like, does it contain one? And we can find out but just by coming in there and calling contains and specifically what we're looking for. We're going to be able to copy a stack to an object array, just like we did previously. So I'm going to call this num array two is equal to, and then what we want to copy from, and then two array. 
just like we did with the other collections. So after you do this for a little bit, you start to remember them because they use, for the most part, the same type of functions. Come in here and let's say we wanna print this array out. We can do so, of course. So we're just going to call the string again and the join function and we want everything to be separated by a comma as well as a space and then what we specifically want to print out is going to be number array two and make sure that's closed off and is there anything else i want to cover well of course you're going to be able to come in and go stack and clear and that's going to clear the stack but you know that already and we're going to run this now and see what our output is here you can see it was able to come in there and peek at the three and then pop the three. Then you can see the three doesn't show up in the output. And here you can see that it comes back as true as one existed. And there you can see that we were able to print out all of the items in our stack. So there you go, guys. That is a lot of information about collections. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.